This is Lesson 11-2, Statistical Studies and Sampling Methods. Our essential question is, how can you choose the best type of study to answer a given statistical question and choose a reasonable sample? So example one is to choose the type of study. So which of the three main types of studies um, is shown in each example below? So first type we have is a sample survey. So a sample survey asks every member of the sample the same set of questions and records the answers. So an example of that would be a newspaper study. A newspaper polls randomly selected residents in a town about which mayoral candidate they prefer. Our second type is an experiment. So an experiment involves applying a treatment to some group or groups and measuring the effects of the treatment. So an example of that would be a doctor study. So a doctor conducts a clinical trial of new blood pressure medicine by prescribing it to half the patients in the study and measuring the effect it has on their blood pressure. And then our third type is an observational study. So you measure or observe members of a sample in such a way that they are not affected by the study. So an example of that would be grocery store study. A grocery store wonders how many customers bring reusable grocery bags to the store. They have an employee stand at the checkout and count the number of people using reusable bags. Okay, so example two is to determine sources of bias. So if we look at the first example, it says a psychologist is conducting surveys to study the happiness level of people who live in a neighborhood. She asked the same questions to the two samples below chosen from the population in the neighborhood. So the first group, so 100 people were surveyed on a sunny after Saturday afternoon and 65% of the people were happy. And then the second group, 100 people were surveyed Monday morning and 35% of people were happy. So this would be a situation where we definitely have bias. So we know in general people are probably going to be happier. The weather could impact that. The day of the week could impact that. The time of the day. All of those things. Um, so if they're generally determining if, this pe if these people are happy or not, um, they would need to do a more um, random sampling of their happiness at different times, different weather, all of that. So then the second one says, in the following situation are the differences between groups potentially due to bias. So it says a school wants to know the average height of its students. The school randomly chooses some students and measures their height. Some students are under five feet tall and some are over six feet, five inches tall. So just because we have some, we have extremes as far as the height, that doesn't mean that there's bias because the students were randomly selected. So this would not be an example of bias. Okay. So we have to be careful in how we sample in order to avoid bias. So you can see here, this is a chart that talks about our different types of um, sampling and whether or not it's high risk for bias or not. So first one is, is stratified sampling. And so that's where you divide your population into groups with similar characteristics. And then a sample is randomly chosen from each group. And then we have cluster sampling where population is divided into convenient clusters. And then entire clusters are chosen at, at random as the sample. And then systematic sampling is where you start with one member chosen at random, and then you use a rule, like every third member um, gets sampled. So those are ways to avoid bias if we, the other two are high risk of bias. So one is convenience sampling. So convenience sampling is only choosing subjects that are in close proximity or easy to get to. And then self-selected sampling. So that's when people volunteer themselves to be part of the sample. So if we look at these situations, we're going to talk about what sampling method is used for the following examples. And is the method likely to be biased? So our first one is starting with, the random, starting with a randomly chosen ID number. Every fifth student ID number was chosen and that student was asked to fill out a survey. 
So that would be, our example would be systematic. And that one would have a low um, possibility of bias because we have a, there's a system to how they're surveyed and um, you're going to probably get an equal representation of all the different views of the students. Okay. Um, B says a retailer put feedback cards at the front of its store. They get responses from 22% of their customers. So that would be self-selected. And there probably is likely to be bias because um, we know that um, usually people that have strong feelings one way or the other are more likely to self-select or volunteer to take surveys of those types. So you're probably going to get people that are maybe upset about something or had a really great experience and want to tell about it. So those are the people. So there could be bias in that. And then the third one is a city wants to know what percent of people in the city own a dog or a cat. A city worker goes door to door in the neighborhood around City Hall to ask people about their pets. So the keywords here are neighborhood around City Hall. So that would be convenience. And there probably is going to be bias because maybe there are laws on owning dogs and cats and people that live closer to City Hall are worried about being caught or something. <laughs> or maybe it's the the area is more city and less less um, friendly for having pets. Or there's, there's a lot of things that could go into that. So that is also a method that would be likely to be biased. Okay, and our last one um, says to describe a design for a controlled experiment to test a new drug for treating the flu on mice. How does this? How does randomization apply to your design? So this would be an experiment, um, and you would you could randomly assign the mice into two groups: an experimental group that's going to receive the treatment, and then the control group that doesn't. And then using statistics to compare the effect of the treatment on each group. So it's randomly randomization because you're randomly assigning the mice into the group. Um, the control group does not receive the drug, but the experimental group does. And the results are analyzed to see whether the new drug affects the progression of the flu in the way that is significantly different from receiving no treatment. The random assignment to experimental and control groups should ensure that the difference between the two groups is due to the drug rather than some other cause. So it's kind of an example of randomizing experiments. Okay, so that is 11.2.